Hi, my name is Dr. Mary Matthews and I am Assistant Professor of Flute at Tennessee Tech University, flutist with the Cumberland Quintet and Principal Flutist of the Bryan Symphony Orchestra in Cookville, Tennessee. This is a series of videos designed for beginning flute players who are just getting started on their instruments for the very first time. So this is the first of the four videos and in this video I will be talking about how to open the flute case safely and how to put together the instrument safely and properly. Uh, I have with me today two different types of student flute cases so that I can show you what it's going to look like when you're opening up the case and about to put your flute together. Now it might seem like kind of a basic thing to talk about how to open up a flute case, but if we open up the flute case upside down the wrong way, the parts can fall out all over the floor. And the last thing that we want to do is break the instrument before we've even had a chance to play it. So I have a student flute case here with me. And there's two things that I want to point out to help you decide how to open the case safely. So there's a logo here on the top of the flute. This is an Artly student flute. And you'll notice that the logo here is on the top of the flute case. If that logo were facing toward the floor, then you would know that you're holding the flute upside down. So it's important that we keep that logo on the top. Now, not every case will have a logo, most do, but for the cases that don't, the other way that we determine which side of the flute case is up and which is down are the latches right here. So you'll see that on this case, the latches are facing downward and all we have to do to open up the case is flip them this way. So we see downward latches, if they're facing toward the floor, we know that the flute case is right side up. So to open this flute case, First thing you do is check to make sure it's right side up. Second thing you're going to do is flip the latches toward your body and then you're going to rest the flute safely in your lap. The great thing about the flute is that it's small and you can put the whole instrument together with it sitting safely in your lap. Now we recommend that your feet are flat on the floor so that you can balance the flute without letting it slide off of your lap and onto the floor. So once the flute is safely resting in your lap, you can go ahead and unlatch and open up the case. Now, before we go on and talk about the parts inside, I am going to show you one other very common type of student flute case. Over here, I have a student Yamaha flute with me. So just like the Artly, there's a logo right here on the top of the case. So I know that this is the top of the flute case. Now these latches, have a latch facing downward and then the loop that goes up over the top. So to open this case, I am going to push the latch forward, bring this down. I'll do the same with the other side and then I can safely open the case. So just like with the other flute, I'm going to make sure that I'm holding the case upright. Then I'm going to flip so that the latches are facing toward my body and then safely rest the flute in your lap. So once you've made sure it's safely resting in your lap and it's facing upright, you'll go ahead and unlatch the case, open it up, and you're going to notice three parts of the flute inside the case. And you should also see a cleaning rod in your case. A cleaning rod is sometimes plastic, sometimes it's made out of metal. If you don't have one in your case, you'll wanna make sure that you get a cleaning rod so that you can take really good care of your flute. And then in addition to the cleaning rod, you should also have a cleaning cloth that goes with the cleaning rod. So I'll show you what all of these pieces look like on a student instrument. And then we'll go ahead and we'll start putting the instrument together. So the pieces that we see inside the case, three of those pieces are part of the flute. The first piece looks like this. This is called the head joint. This is the part of the instrument that we blow in when we play, and this is the part of the instrument where most of the sound production happens. The next piece is the longest piece on the instrument, this piece right here. This is called the body of the instrument. This is where we have most of the key work. We're gonna be holding and resting our fingers over the key work here on the body. And the third piece is the foot joint. It's the smallest piece, the shortest piece, and it also has a bit of key work on it. And this one is going to be operated by the smallest finger on our right hand. 
So you'll notice when I picked up the pieces of the flute, the head joint, the body, and the foot joint, then I made sure not to touch any of the keys or to press down any of the keys as I was picking up the flute. This is to make sure that we don't break or bend or damage the most fragile parts of the instrument, which are the keys and then the rods right here, okay? So when we go to put the flute together, we're gonna be thinking about the order of the human body to help us remember the order of the flute. The head joint, like our head, sits on the top of the flute. The body is in the middle. And the foot joint, just like our feet, are at the bottom of the instrument. So we're gonna remember our two rules when putting together the flute. One is that we are never going to hold the keys. We're always going to hold the flute in places where there aren't any keys, and I'll show you as we put it together. And the second is that we're always gonna make sure to twist and push as we are putting the parts of the flute together. That way we don't damage the barrel or the body of the instrument as we're putting it together. So we're gonna start with the head or the top, the head joint of the flute. And because the head joint doesn't have any keys on it, we can hold it pretty much anywhere we want, but the best place to hold the head joint is right here at the end underneath the lip plate. This is what we call the lip plate. The spot that we do wanna be careful of on the head joint is this part right here. We call this the crown. You can think of the crown sitting on top of the head. This, if we pull it hard enough, will untwist. And we wanna make sure not to do that because that's going to move around the cork that's inside the flute. So we wanna leave the crown pretty much untouched. So the best place to hold the head joint is right here. Then we're gonna go ahead, and I like to hold this in my left hand, and go ahead and pick up the body of the flute with the right hand. And again, I'm gonna hold it right here where there are no keys. You'll notice that the bottom of the body, there's really not a lot of space after the keys end, but the top of the body has this empty part where there are no keys. This is called the neck of the flute. So we've got our head, our neck, and then the body with all the keys. So we're gonna hold the neck with the right hand, we're gonna hold the head joint with the left hand, and we are going to twist while we push. We take the flute, we twist as we gently push the two parts together. Once the two parts are together, we're going to push the head joint until it's almost all the way in, but not all the way as far as we can go. I'm gonna hold this nice and close so you can see. There's about this much space left of the darker part of the head joint. You should be able to see that still sticking out of the body, okay? Then, after we've pushed the head joint in the correct amount, we wanna make sure that it's lined up properly. So we're going to take a look at this part, which is called the tone hole of the flute. We want the tone hole of the flute to line up with the row of keys on the top of the body. And the way that I can tell is by pretending the flute is a telescope. I'm going to look down the body of the flute with one eye and check to make sure that the tone hole is lined up with the top row of keys. Now, right now I'm looking and it's actually a bit too far over to the right. So I'm going to move again, very safely twisting, move the head joint so that it's properly lined up with the body. So now, if you were to look down my flute, you would see that the tone hole is lined up with the top row of keys on the body. After the body and the head joint are put together, we're gonna pick up the foot joint in our right hand. You're gonna hold, again, the neck of the body in your left hand. And we're gonna be holding the foot joint, again, at the bottom where there are no keys. So we hold the bottom of the foot joint, then we hold the neck of the body, and then we have the two parts right next to each other that are going to be fastened together. So just like we did with the body and the head joint, we're going to twist and push, okay? This one, we are going to push all the way. So there shouldn't be any space left between the foot joint and the body. We push that in all the way. And once it's pushed in all the way, we're gonna check to make sure it's lined up properly. 
Now on the foot joint, you're gonna see what we call the rod right here, we have this line. And this, the rod should line up with the center of the very last key on the body. So again, I'm gonna look down my flute as if it were a telescope, I'm going to make sure that the rod is right in the center of the last key. There's the rod in the center of the last key. And then everything looks good and properly aligned. It can be confusing with the foot joint and the body because we have a row of keys on the foot joint that looks like it should line up with the row of keys on the body. That's a very common mistake. So we just wanna make sure that the rod lines up with the keys on the body, not the keys of the foot joint lining up with the keys on the body. And this is to make sure that our pinky finger, the very shortest of the fingers, can comfortably reach the pinky keys here on the foot joint. But we'll get to that a little bit later on when we talk about holding the flute and playing the correct keys. So the last thing that I'll show you once your flute is safely put together is the cleaning rod as well as the cleaning cloth here inside the case. I'll show you how to thread the cleaning cloth into the cleaning rod and then clean out each of the parts as we take the instrument apart. So your cleaning rod should look something like this. They can be made of wood, plastic, or metal, but the cleaning rod is going to have, uh, it'll look kind of like the, a needle. And you should have a cloth that looks something like this. We wanna make sure it's a fairly thin material like silk, something thicker uh, that is designed to polish the outside of the flute that is pretty bulky. And if you try and put that through your flute to clean the inside, it can get stuck or damage the instrument. So we should have something thin that looks like this. You're gonna take the corner on the end, thread it through the cleaning rod. And then we wanna make sure to cover the end of the cleaning rod. This is to make sure that the metal or the plastic or the wood doesn't scratch the inside of the flute as you're putting it through the flute. So we have our cleaning gear put together. I'm going to take off the foot joint the same way I put it together. Gently twist and push while holding one hand here and one hand here. So we take off the foot joint Gonna take the cleaning cloth and put it through one end. There's gonna be a lot of spit coming out on the cloth, so we wanna make sure that you wash your hands as soon as you're done cleaning your flute, okay? Then we're gonna thread it through the other way. Same thing, there's gonna be spit coming out, so make sure that you are being really careful. And then we're gonna take the foot joint and place it back in the case. Next, we're gonna take apart the body and the head joint, just like we put it together. So we're gonna twist and pull, holding on the neck, and then on the end of the head joint. We'll put the head joint down for a second. Now, to thread the cleaning rod through the body, we do have to put our finger in the end of the flute. So we're going to push the cleaning rod all the way through, and then you're just gonna take the end of your finger, make sure that you push until you see the cleaning rod coming out the other end of the instrument. Again, there's gonna be spit on here. We're gonna pull that out. And then you're gonna do the same thing in the opposite direction. Push through the end of the body. Follow with your finger until you see it coming out the other side. And then pull the cleaning cloth and the rod out of the other end of the body. And then you'll safely place that part in the case. Now the last piece, the head joint, this is where most of the spit and condensation are going to be when you're done playing your flute. So it is common for little drips or droplets to come out. We wanna make sure that we're being really safe. We wanna make sure that you're again, washing your hands and not cleaning it out too close to another person. So you're going to take your cleaning rod, you're gonna push it right until it hits the end. You're not gonna be able to thread it all the way through and then you're gonna twist and then pull it out. I like to check just to see if there's any big droplets that I've missed and then do it a second time. Twist all the way through. Right? And then you're gonna go ahead and put your head joint back in the case and lay it down. You can unthread the cloth from the cleaning rod and make sure that you wash this regularly. Like I said, it's gonna have spit on it. You should wash your flute out excuse me, clean your flute out with this every time you play it so that the moisture doesn't sit in the flute. 
and then you should wash that after you have cleaned your flute out as well or if you have one or two that you can rotate through that's going to really help keep a nice clean sanitary flute thank you so much and the second video is going to focus on playing your first sounds using just the head joint